Hello, everybody. We're Evelyn, Paloma, Saran, and Shinya, and we are Creek Placemakers. Our name is inspired by the music of the common Eastern Frogwood. Its presence, unveiled by their music, is a key indicator of healthy water systems. What we will present to you is our placemaking proposal for the Stony Creek Common Site. As placemakers, we seek to enhance the social and environmental value of a place by strengthening the community's network, their sense of belonging, and promoting the stewardship of country. We would like to start by acknowledging the Wurundjeri, Wawurrung, and Bunurong people of the Kulin nations as the, the traditional owners of the unceded land on which we live, work, and study. We acknowledge their deep connection to country and their ongoing care for this land. We pay our respect to their elders past, present, and emerging. Our presentation consists of three components, a story of the place, what we saw and heard, and our proposal. First, we will walk you through a story of the place. Stony Creek Commons is a council-owned undeveloped site that represents a potential asset for the local community. It is located next to a recently built playground within a residential area, intersected by an important environmental asset, the Stony Creek. Due to its proximity, the site can potentially contribute to improving the biodiversity of the area currently threatened by the nearby industrial activities. The creek hosts a wide variety of trees, shrubs, and wildlife, and this water body represents a powerful source of indigenous knowledge embedded in place. The area was occupied by the Marin Buluk clan, part of the Wawarong people for over 40,000 years. They managed the health of the land and waterway to ensure the resources would be adequate for their needs on succeeding generations. Since European settlement, industrial activities turned some areas into wastelands and the creek into a sewer. However, environmental groups have also risen to work upon the recovery of this water body. One of the opportunities in the Stony Creek Common Site is the co-creation of a site for stories that have been overlooked in urban and spatial design practices to be reclaimed. Stories from traditional owners, children, migrants, elderly, and even more than human friends. In order to present our pathway to reimagine new and healing narratives of place, we'll start by providing a general context of the built and natural environment. The site is surrounded by metropolitan transport networks such as Jirong Road and the Princess Highway that have centered the territorial disconnection between neighborhoods. The open green space in the area are mostly plain grounds and sports grounds with disconnected nature reserves along Stony Creek. There is a lack of accessible local public transport and bike lanes from the site to nearby train station due to the car-oriented environment. Zooming in, the area is largely residential blocking public amenities, place to visit and then gather working opportunities and there is limited access to fresh food within 20 minutes walk. It poses an opportunity to utilize the site for community benefits and then food security. Based on geographic and the census data on bones 400 meters and then 20, 12, 1200 meters radius centered on Stony Creek Commons, we set three personas as the target audience. John is one of the new residents indicating the increased population in the area, his single and travels to work by car as due to thirds of the employed population in the area. David is one of the children who can't go to playgrounds safety, safely by themselves, while David wants to go to Correction Park to play. Princess Highway prevents him from traveling between home and then Crank Shark Park. Nayana lives with her partner and a child, representing one majority of the population in the area. English is not her first language, and she, she goes to work using public transport as one force of the employed population in the area does. Stepping away from the people-oriented analysis, let's look at the places through our modern human lens for the common Eastern Froglet and the New Forland Honey Eater and the Horse Garden Mandate. Uh, Stony Creek presents an environment in which to hide, seek for food, nest, and bread. 
Nevertheless, there are multiple threats to their survival due to the dimension of the environmental corridor and the development pressures and that reduce their areas for habitat needed to flourish in a diverse environment. From this analysis, we have identified a range of issues that revolve around three themes, climate change, habitat and biodiversity and cultural representation. These themes are strongly intertwined, but overall what we seek to respond to through our strategy is the improvement of the territorial disconnectedness between communities, people and places. And to do so, we promote the use of indigenous knowledge to inform design. There have already been relevant efforts from public agencies for the future of the area, such as the Council's West Footbury Neighbourhood Plan or Melbourne Water's intention to rehabilitate the Stony Creek. The most recent effort done by the Council is the Stony Creek Future Decisions Plan, Future Directions Plan, which states specific actions and assigns important resources for improvements in the area. Their project includes the removal of the fence basic parklands and tree coverage for the site. Willing to activate and redesign the site in service of the community, the council established an advisory board in December 2021 and tasked to re-envision the site into the future Stony Creek Commons. They developed a consultation platform through the council website to capture initial ideas from the community. Additionally, we held a community engagement session on the 17th of February, where we were able to hear community visions. Some of key feedback included storytelling under the mighty river red gum and having shared areas and a flexible event space. The, the size of the circle represents the number of requests by participants. Putting all requests on the site, the following image has emerged. In order to synthesize these desires, we came up with the following framework as an initial prompt for the participatory design process. What we see as a common dream for the site is a place to learn, a place to gather, and a place for habitat conservation. The overarching activity is storytelling through three main programs, a community garden, event space, and an environment education path. Our proposal consists of pro providing opportunities and spaces to undertake tactical actions for the on-site collaborative design activities and the timeline and strategies for operating the participatory design process. Based on what we heard, we imagined the atmosphere of the space. The image reflects what the community seeks, a place to gather around creative storytelling, a place to learn from a range of activities held in community space, a place for a biodiverse habitat to flourish and the underlying values. Working upon the matrix of these uh, qualitative values will give precedence for the monitoring and evaluating strategy. Taking into account the process and the existing milestones set by the council, we propose four pop-up events consisting of a set of activities in the, in the upcoming months. These are platforms to enable participatory design process for three main elements of the proposal. Each of the three elements is developed through incremental tact tactical activities. For example, an initial event could be a workshop to build some garden beds and use these to shape the boundaries of an improvised stage where we invite musicians and storytellers. We could frame it as a neighborhood potluck and have other ancillary events linked to the surrounding schools, such as painting of the sidewalks inspired by nature. The pop-up events help align these activities to make a vibrant environment where diverse groups gather, bond, and gauge interests and the usage of the land. The image on the slide shows how we envision the first place making activity where the fence is removed and the community gathers around food and music. We aim to cultivate a sense of community ownership by inviting community members to contribute to the building of the landscape and ongoing maintenance. This will help build the new narratives and relink lost bonds in place. In considering the influence of the different stakeholders and the degree of impact of the project on them, it became apparent that its future needs to be determined through constructive 
and collaborative discussions through empowering the often overlooked voices. In order to enable a community-led approach, we support the creation of an alliance to ensure a collaborative horizontal governance strategy. To do so, we envision the council to request the advisory group to appoint new positions responsible for design and facilitation of discussions. This scheme highlights the need for the transdisciplinary participatory design process, bringing together different ideas and expertise to ensure the sustainability and the resilience of the place. All these events may encompass different outcomes, which are never changing and evolving process, just like the froglet. Some of the outcomes may include establishing a caretaker strategy, governing committees, and a strategy for alternative financing models. The evaluation and the monitoring are crucial for measuring the success of each ongoing tactical actions and creating a constant community feedback loop. We propose on-site and digital engagement tools to collect and analyze both quantitative and qualitative feedback. We also understand that this proposal encompasses a set of risks and limitations. For example, the more stakeholders take part in the project, the more conflicts might be generated among the stakeholders. However, the conflict could work as one key for strengthening the straight stakeholders' relationships through consensus building. Likewise, other risks and limitations can be converted into chances for reinforcing the participatory planning process. We hope that this presentation and proposal helps the different stakeholders here present shift the previous top-down council-led initiatives to a grassroots-led design process in order to bring the further long-term outcomes that will benefit both the broader community and the country.